I'm sure you know that feeling of being trapped in a crowd, pinned in by a flow of bodies. But the question you don't want to ask is, if that crowd starts to panic and you're stuck in the middle, what do you do? On match day, this stadium will be packed with tens of thousands of people. So crowd safety is incredibly important. But the thing that's difficult to control is us and how we react in a group. When a crowd suddenly wants to leave a space quickly, all at the same time, then we may have a problem. I want you to meet Nikolai Bode. Supported by AXA, Nikolai is investigating collective behaviour, how crowds act, especially in a state of evacuation and panic. Hi Greg. Hey Nikolai, so tell me more. Well Greg, I always treat crowds as groups of individuals who make their own decisions. And what I'm really interested in is a deeper understanding of how individuals behave in crowds and how this could help us make public spaces safer. Okay. Best way to see this is in an experiment. Oh, great. Okay, Nikolai, what's the plan? So we've got this lovely space here and we've got a good crowd building outside. We're going to get the crowd to enter the building through the south door. Then we're going to ask them to exit the building through the north door when the fire alarm goes off and we're going to ask them to wear t-shirts of different colours so that we can tell what social group they belong to. That sounds great. Let's go. This is it. Now let's see what happens. Oh, they're going. Are they all gonna, which way are they gonna go? Oh, they're all going for the north exit. Oh, no, the grandma and for the closest nice. one. And she's grabbed the kid. Well, they've all gone. Lots of stuff going on in there, definitely. Interesting. So, Nikolai, you've had a look at all the footage. Overall, did you get a lot from it? Absolutely. I mean, with these kinds of experiments, we can really build up an understanding of what different behaviours are important in evacuations. They knew the alarm noise. And they all pretty much left, didn't they? That's right. Pretty much everyone went out the way you told them to go. What about the different social groups? Yeah, we can see that here. Let's focus on the guys in the blue t-shirts. What we can see is that they make a consensual decision to exit through the same exit. It's a perfect example for a group decision. And these decisions can take time, so that can have a bearing on how long it takes you to get out of a building. And the grandma and the kid, as soon as the alarm went off, her reaction was brilliant. Yeah, they're really interesting. There was no way the grandmother was going to leave without her grandchild. So we can see her dashing uh, to pick her up. And then they leave actually through the opposite exit. And in this situation, actually, maybe that meant that they got out faster because the other route was already quite congested. Now we've had a look at it and we've done the experiment. What advice would you give to building designers to help get a crowd out in an evacuation? The one thing I would probably say is that um, in many buildings, emergency exits are only used as emergency exits. I think it would be good if they were also used as entrances, so that when it comes to an evacuation, people are already familiar with these routes and they use them rather than everyone crowding down one main route they know. We just can't seem to avoid crowds, even beyond the daily commuting work crowds. We seek out crowds for play, too. We don't like to think that something can go wrong, but if it does, it's good to know that Nikolai has got our back. <laughs>